All right, we're going to go right into it because there are 12 points and um, I'm trying to finish it as fast as I can. Um, today we're talking about dirty dozen. Dirty dozen, um, so that means there are 12 things. Uh, basically, dirty dozen is just simply 12 um, mistakes or 12 things, wrong things that people do in their dating process. About 12 wrong things that people do in their dating process. Hallelujah. All right. Um, Quickly, I'll, I'll, like I said, I'll go right into it. Number one, um, dating without standards. That's number one. Dating without what? Standards. That's one of the biggest mistakes you can make. That's one of the wrongest things you can do to yourself, to do dating without having standards. Huh. <laughs> Um, Nigeria, some time ago, created an organization called the Standard Organization of what? Nigeria. SON. S-O-N. They have it everywhere in the world. Because just because you claim you want to make a chair, doesn't mean that this chair is meeting what? The, reg the standard, the official regulated standards. So you too, you must have S-O-N in your relationship. Are you here, somebody? If you are going to get the best out of it, there must be standards. You can't just say anybody, anybody I see, as long as na man, man, na man. <laughs> or woman, na woman. Oh, no. You must have standards. It's okay to have standards. Before you go into this dating or relationship issue, there must be some basic standards that help to guide you. It gives you peace at the, uh, at the long run when you have certain standards. Hallelujah. All right. Um, let's look at one or two scriptures, then we'll move on. Proverbs 22, from verse 28. Proverbs 22 and 8. DJ, give me from NLT version. NLT version. NLT version. Proverbs 22, 28. See what it says. It said, don't cheat your neighbor by moving the ancient boundary markers set by previous what? Generations. Basically, they're saying, um, you can give me NIV. Also, they're saying, don't, 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 don't move boundaries. Keep the standards, basically, that the previous... That means there, there are certain standards that have been proven to work over time. He said, when you get there, keep the standards. He said, do not move the ancient boundary stone set by your ancestors. Basically, they're saying previous generations have set certain standards. He said, don't move them. Use those standards. If you run your life by standards, it helps you make better decisions over your feelings. Praise God. For most things that are well done, they are measured on the basis of standard, not on the basis of feeling. Let me explain to you. If you are here and um, you have not yet developed certain standards for areas of your life, you find that you suffer casualties in those areas. Let me give you an example. Let's say money. If you don't have standard on how you, treat, how you relate with money, you will go broke quickly. For me, I have basic standards. I will not borrow money I can't forget. I don't borrow it. If I know I can't dash you, in case you decide not to pay, I will never borrow you. Are you getting what I'm saying? The day you borrow somebody, your life saving. No matter the story, see, forget the story. The person borrowing, the story is telling you when he's borrowing it and when it's time to pay it. <laughs> That's why you see banks. Banks can't loan you money based on your feeling. They can't loan you money based on your circumstances. If you don't understand that, don't worry. <laughs> they can't loan you money based on what you are going through. You can't come and say, hey, my mama, my mama will die tomorrow. I bet. It doesn't concern them. They have basic standards. No, that whoever is sitting on that seat will follow those procedures before they loan you money. It's for their safety. Somebody got what I'm saying? Standards will give you peace of mind. Follow basic standards. Hallelujah. Follow basic standards in everything that you do. There was a video that I was making. I don't know whether it's popular, but I saw it last week or so, some days ago. Um, um, somebody was talking about this transgender issue. Transgender is people that, has, that are maybe a man saying that he wants to be a woman. So he begins to change his body parts. Sometimes he just changes his dressing and says he's not a woman. Then there, are, then there are women that also want to become men. Then there are, there, there, there are children that want to become adults. Then there are adults that want to become, uh, you know, children. So there's a man that, that hired a nanny, got nappy and all this, because he, say he feels like a child, you know. The issue with things like that is that once, once you start allowing man to say he can change to be woman, then you must allow any other person change to any other thing that they like. Because the premise of it is that you can change to whatever you feel like. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. 
is the same concept, the same thing that makes homosexuality bad, for instance. Where if somebody says, oh, I, I, I don't want to sleep with, I'm a woman, I don't want to sleep with men, I want to sleep with, with other women like me. He said, that, that is my right, it's what I feel like. Great. Then the person that wants to sleep with animals, what right do you have to tell him not to sleep? Because he says that's what he likes. I get what I'm saying. Standards give us sanity. Can you imagine somebody driving on any part of the road? He said, me. Forget Nigeria is right hand drive, left hand drive doesn't concern me. He's here, I want to drive. Can you picture that? Even though that's how most people drive here. I've seen people reversing roundabouts in Nigeria. I don't even understand. Roundabout means you are going to come back. You don't have to reverse. Just go. You will come back. You reverse in roundabout. <laughs> Somebody get what I'm saying? Standards give us order. It helps our life. You see, you must set standards. Ladies, especially, before you even start liking a guy, there should be basic things you must check. Or that you must have set. Guys, same thing with you. There should be basic standards. For instance, there was a, one, of our, one of my people here in church. She's even around today. She was just in us. Um, I don't know whether it was last month or last week. I can't remember. She said that those days when she, when she was still single. She said when she meets a guy, as she's shaking you and you are getting close, she's telling you all her basic requirements or basic standards. She said, number one, she doesn't have sex before marriage. She said, number two, her genotype is AS. A- 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 <laughs> you know, she was telling me some things. Now, it sounded funny, but that's the right way to do it. Of course, you, not, you don't have to, you know, um, she was just being funny, but basically, you must have those basic set standards and let the person know as fast as possible. I get what I'm saying. Don't, don't, don't say it depends on my mood. I don't have sex before marriage, but it depends on the guy. Mm-mm. When you're when you like that, you will never stand for anything. Like they say, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Somebody get what I'm saying. If, if, if you know you are, you are AS and you don't want to marry under AS, let the person know early before feelings, before you start catching feelings. Somebody got what I'm saying. For instance, some other people have basic standards, they don't do distance relationship. So once you start calling me from Sokoto, don't need to be picking the call because we can't start anything. I don't do distance relationship. I get what I'm saying. If, if, it's, if it's something you want to do, it's fine, but if you know you can't do distance relationship, set the standards and don't start. Some, some people start things that, and they have too many unfinished business you know, in different places because they don't have standards. When you have standards, you know people that are eligible and people that can never be eligible. No need for anybody to offend each other. This world, we already have too many enemies than to be making enemies. Somebody got what I'm saying? The worst enemies are enemies that are built on emotional problem. It's worse than even money enemies. Are you here? Because emotional enemies, 20 years down the line, they have, but they are married with children, they still remember. Say, that boy broke my heart in 1962. In railway. You remember <laughs> emotional, so have basic standards. Um, I, I will not date on that person that is AS because I'm AS, I don't want a sickle cell issue, or I, I don't have sex for marriage. You basic standard that is a they are, they are biblical standard. One is a biblical standard that you have. I don't have sex for marriage. Um, on that basic, basically, I don't do distance relationship. Some people can have other basic from somebody like me. Then, um, when I was still single, basically, I could not date somebody that was not committed to God. There was no two ways about it. You're not, you're not, you're, you're not seriously born again, and you're not serving in your church. You can't even be my friend. For me, that was my own basic standard. You can't even be my friend because it means it means you're you not as dedicated. You don't understand service. Service is about serving other people, not you. Praise God. So somebody that is committed in a church and doesn't serve, that means she's, she's not practicing to serve other people. And that's what marriage is all about at the end of the day, serving another person. Basic standards, okay? Let me read one more scripture for you. Um, um, so Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Um, you can still give me an LT version. So um, these people of this world, the people of the world, people that, that don't have God at the center of their life, they have their own standards. In their own standards, once a guy takes you out and buys you drinks, he's like, he's, in his mind, you are dating and he believes you can have sex that, that day. Is this world standard? You, it's up to you to determine what standards you, you, you build. See what it says. It said, don't copy the behavior and the what customs of what? This world. So you don't have to copy it. That must not be your own standard. If that's how they do it, it mustn't be your own standard. You as a child of God should let the word of God set the standards for you. He said, don't copy the behavior and standards of a customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing what? The way you think. Most of the things people call dating today is, is some people can hook up today today, just talk today today and have sex today today. And there's nothing, no, no commitment whatsoever. He said, don't, don't, don't let those standards. Give me CEV version of the Bible, of that same verse. CEV. So, 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 so don't, don't, don't fall. Don't fall to those kind of, of standards. Don't let the world dictate to you. you see, but, but the way this world calls dating is, is just two people 
that meet, no concrete agreement. Just say hey, hello, they just just, and the next thing they are involved, they are living together or whatever. No clear commitment. Have clear standards. Very important. It always saves me. Because as human beings, there are people that can tell you. See, some of you think you cannot be, they cannot psych you. You've not heard story. Some people, you say this is my money. I will never. When you guys tell you the story, involve you. <laughs> Before you know, <laughs> I met somebody somewhere. <laughs> By the time they said this story, just this story, no matter where it's going, I'm not following you. He said, I didn't bring my ATM card, but uh, they said they're not collecting cash. If you can transfer for me, I'll transfer to your account. I said, my brother, don't involve me. Because once we start this journey, I don't know where you are taking me to. <laughs> Haven't you seen people that met somebody in the bus stop and they don't decide their land, for, they don't decide their whole property? Is they, they, got, they got involved. So set standards. For me as a pastor, I'm very busy. Um, so sometimes I have basic standards. Um, um, you must be able to, if, if, you, if, you, if, if, if I'm not in the office and you, you insist you want to see me, you must give me a hint of what you want to see me for. For me to be sure that it's something that requires me to handle. Because there are many things everybody, other people can handle it. Then secondly, I'll check if, if it's the kind of person I need to invite to my house. Because on rare occasions, I might be at home and the person is in church and I need to see the person. I can't come here. I'll get, I'll get somebody to bring the person to my house. It's very rare, rare occasions, but I have basic standards. But there are, every once in a while, there are people that come and they make it sound urgent. That pastor, I need to see you. They, it's, look. I'm even dead. As I'm talking to you now, it's my dead body talking to you. I'll be saying, tell me, what is there? We insist, they will insist. But you have basic standards. I'm a lot of, the, the one particular case, like the guy almost, I almost invited the guy to my house. And I don't do that just for anybody. And, and, and at the last minute, I just did one other check and found out that the guy wanted to waste my time. I said, tell me, tell me what. He said, hey, you see, there's this money. I said, it's money you want to, you don't, you don't need to see me. I can tell you from here, I don't have to give you. Do you understand? No need for a long story. I have basic standards. It, just, it, it saves your life. It saves you time. Some people want to just waste your time. Hallelujah. In building relationships that last, it begins with improving one's self-esteem. Looking beyond face value and choosing the right partner. You too can have the marriage of your dreams. Number two, dating without maturity. Number one is dating without standards. Number two is dating without maturity. Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 13 verse 11, he said, when I was a child, I behaved like a child. He said, but when I grew up, I put away childish things. Dating without maturity is when you're rushing into the dating experience. You know, you have, you have other problems. You have, you have other things motivating you into a relationship other than the right things that should be motivating you. For instance, you might be feeling lonely. The Bible said in, in Ecclesiastes, there's a time for everything. He said there's time to embrace and there's time to cease from embracing. Sometimes that you say you're feeling lonely, God is trying to separate you to work on you. You see, sometimes, you see, you see for, for some surgeries to go on in your life, you can't be up and running. That's why they give you anesthesia. They knock you off to carry out some surgery on your body. You can't be alive and well and participate. I guess, and because you will not, how many of you, if, you, if they, want to, you, they want to do surgery and you're awake and you see the man bring out knife? And he wants to cut you. What will you do? You what? Hold his hand. You will stop it. You are stopping the surgery God wants to do in your life. He's trying to separate you for a while. He's trying to say, cut off from these people. You, 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 you like their company, but you don't need their company. You, you like their company, but their company is not helping you because that's what I want to do in your life, but they're affecting you. I need to separate you a while. But you, you, that, that loneliness, you are trying to avoid that loneliness. Not knowing that you must first be alone before God can even connect you. The Bible says it's not good for man to be alone. That word is alone is all in one. So actually, God, what God was saying is that, you know, they, 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 there's, there's many paths to that person. And it's not good for all of it to be inside one. I need to separate it, but you must first be all in one first before God can work on you. Hallelujah. You can't be, you can't participate in your own surgery. I remember when I, those is when I used to um, date my wife, we just were in a relationship. I, I, I forgot what I was doing um, um, in, in, with the car. And um, 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 uh, I think my, my nail, my nail, something happened to my nail and it bent backwards. It didn't, it wasn't that bad, it just bent backwards. Ah, it was painful. And I told her, look, the way this nail is bent, nobody should touch it. That's how it's going to be for the rest. Because it was paining me, I said, I can't touch it. You see, I, I couldn't participate in that because they have to bend that nail back. But I said, no, leave it like that. I'll be managing myself. I won't shake people. I'll, regular, I'll just be. You know what she did? She said, uh, she just distracted me with something else. While I was answering her, she just pushed the nail back. Pow! I shouted, but you see, that was, that's why you are seeing me holding this mic now. If not, by now, I did start holding. <laughs> you see, I, couldn't, I, I wouldn't have willingly 
You understand? I wouldn't have willingly submitted myself to the surgery that will heal me. That's what I'm saying. So sometimes God needs to seclude you. I remember in primary school, I was running. You know this primary school running that you take off your shoes and there'll be any sand and you run with your friends, your friends to reach somewhere. And we're running and I stepped on nail. Bad nail. Long, rusty nail. Long one. Not the small one. Long one like this. Rusty nail. He entered from this side and he was showing from the other side. <laughs> I said, leave this nail. This is how I'm going to be walking for the rest of my life. I will manage it. Don't worry yourself. I will I'll be okay. Nobody must touch that leg or touch that nail. You see, that, that's how we are. we are resisting help. Because it's going to be painful, but God knows this is the only way. I need to separate you. I need to break up. You need to go through that breakup to have sense. Hallelujah. So if you don't go through some kind of breakup, you won't understand what God is. God is trying to allow you to see that this road you are going, there's no road there. But by telling you, you won't hear. You need to see. There are some things that are telling you advice. Don't you have a kind of friends? No matter what you advise, they won't, until they go and see, they will not be advising you. I don't go that place. Say, we know. Not only you, no, no. Now we tell you, you know. <laughs> because no matter what you tell him, you think you are his enemy. I said, nobody touch this nail. You no, know what one guy did while I was busy shouting. I was guarding the place. No boy, call, no come. One guy from nowhere, without any information or warning, he just drew the nail out. Pow! Pow! I, like, I saw heaven. Seven. But that's why I'm walking today. If they didn't pull that nail out, I'll be doing like this. I will still have it here. I'll, all my shoes, they're making. Hole in the middle. <laughs> so you're allowing loneliness motivate you. You're allowing desperation motivate you. Time is running. I'm getting old. I need to just marry anybody. You're allowing that motivate you. Or you are, you are, you are in a sexual mood. You're allowing that motivate you. The worst thing you can do is to make decisions when you are sexually aroused. Is the, you can't make a good decision. If you, are, if you are sexually motivated, the weather is cold. <laughs> My brother, rainy season is not all year round. There's rent season. There's school fees season. There are many other seasons you're not thinking about right now. <laughs> you're lying wrong things. You know, motivate you. So you're ready to marry anybody. Say if it's a smoker, if it's a killer, he's a, killer, he's a liar, he's a 419. Anybody I can marry. No. That's the wrong motivation. Don't be obsessed with the issue of getting married. That's dating without maturity. You're just in a hurry. Anybody goes. That's a mistake. Number three, dating without definition. You must constantly define what you are doing. Dating without definition. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. Dating without defining. Hmm. This one always causes trouble because the world of women is different from the world of men. The mindset of women is different from the mindset of men. It says, no one, it says, no one can know what a person's thought except that person's what? own spirit. Give me in um, NIV. Give me in NIV. Um, he said, he said um, for, for who knows a person's thought except their own spirit within them. They are saying, you can't really know a person's thought except that person reveals it. It's that person that knows his own thought. What do I mean by this? You, when somebody is chatting with you or playing with you, you need to know exactly what they want. Don't assume in this world of social media, other people are assuming all kinds of things. Until a guy specifically says, I want to marry you, he has not made any commitment to you. Even when he says, I want to marry you, you, you need to be sure and let him say it many times. Because for, in the world of women, if you chat with a woman five days straight, back to back, you are in a relationship. In the world of women, she's, she's dating. She's even picking dates. Meanwhile, the guy in his mind is just chatting. So in the world of women, talking consistently means romance, means love. For men, it's not necessarily so. The guy can be saying he's bored. He's just happy he has a gisting partner. So you must always try and get things defined. That means you must know where he's going. If he has not spelt it out, if he's saying you are the kind of girl that I may one day wish to want to see if it's possible, for me to likely <laughs> marry you. That is not any commitment, sister. That's, there's no commitment in that statement. Because women don't understand these things. Say, so one day you look like the mother of my children. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything. <laughs> Praise God. All right? Try and get things defined. It gives peace of mind. Because many times you can run ahead of the other person. The person is not thinking of something long term, but you, you're already thinking far. That we just every night, 
He calls me every morning. He calls me every night. Ladies, you must have experienced this. A guy is just with you heavily one week. Every day, Monday to Friday. Morning and night. He's the one that wakes you up. Have you woken up? And the night is the one that puts you to sleep. By chat or call. Then after that one week, you have gotten used to the chat. After the next week, he's not answering. He's not checking up. He's not calling. You are now the one calling. That I said, check up on you. He's not picking. He's not replying. He said, I'm busy. You are the one that assumed that he wanted something long term. Try and have clear definitions. Where are we going? What are we? And you, you will not ask this when you are sleeping with the guy. But that's what some girls do. We are now, you are now naked in somebody's house. You are saying, what are we? We are in fornication. We are committing sin. That's what we are. We are sinners. <laughs> Say, what are we? Sinners. Say, what are we? No. <laughs> Don't assume things. You are not in a relationship until it is clearly spelled out, please. All right? Very important. Try and define things. Just because somebody's chatting with you every day doesn't mean anything. Just because they are using um, um, plenty of words that have no clear meaning doesn't mean anything. Number what? Four. Please don't date without a vision for marriage. If you're a Christian lady, Christian guy, you are not available for just dating sake. You are not dating for dating sake. The purpose of dating or courtship, as the Bible actually calls it, is something we are doing on our way to marriage. So marriage is actually the aim. Dating is just the vehicle. You see, nobody enters a vehicle as a destination. The vehicle itself is not the destination. The plane itself is not the destination. The plane is taking us. To the destination. So don't start a relationship without a definite and clear vision for marriage. In fact, the guy already should have an idea when we are getting married. Why is that important? Because somebody can date you and waste your time. 